Oh, it's another day here at the Comeback Team Studios, and you're watching another episode of the Interesting Times Podcast right here on the Beck Lover Podcast, where I gather all the news stories, all the interesting articles, anything that's crazy that's going on around this world and that I think is important for you to know. I do all the homework so you don't have to. Reality is so much stranger than fiction. We are living in interesting times indeed, my friends. Looks like... Um, it's been back-to-back -back hurricanes, first Hurricane Helene and now Hurricane Milton. I spoke to all my buddies down there. I even had one of you, special shout-out to uh, Scott Hanna for keeping me updated on the east side of the storm towards the east coast of Florida. But um, there was a lot of damage down in uh, Tampa in that region, and I'll be covering some of that. But first, I want to get to something I really wanted to cover, but I haven't been able to get on. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out all the content. I've been on X a lot, Elon Musk's platform. I've been hosting rooms, a couple thousand, 10,000, 20,000 people having very serious discussions about the world we live in, what's going on, and what may be coming our way, especially from now until November. So make sure you hit that X button and, um, you know, stay in the loop. In any event, there was a, an amazing sit down between Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk, and they discussed everything. I'm sure many of you have seen bits and pieces of that interview. I thought it was hilarious when, um, you know, basically Tucker Carlson asked Elon Musk and goes, you know, what's going to happen if the Democrats win? Because you've gone so far right and they look at you as a threat. Like, what are you going to do if they win? If he loses, man, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, you're fucked, dude. <laughs> I'm fucked. If he loses, I'm fucked. <laughs> it does seem that way. You can't just be like, you can't yeah. just be like, yo, I. Yeah, I'm like, how, how long do you think my prison sentence is going to be? Do you think? <laughs> Will I see my children? I don't know. Because <laughs> it's not like you can say, well, yeah, I maxed out to him, but, you know, I get. You were I have no plausible deniability. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and I've been trashing Kamala nonstop. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, that, I mean, the Kamala puppet, I call it. You know, the, 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 the machine that the Kamala puppet represents. Yeah, she's irrelevant. I mean, she's <laughs> yes. not even. No, no, like, I, like I, I made, I made a joke, which I realized I, I deleted, um, which is like nobody's even bothering to try to kill Kamala because it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> what do you achieve? Nothing. No, it's totally Just find right. another puppet. Exactly. That's. <laughs> I mean, it seems like the pendulum has really started to swing completely the other way. So many people, I, I hate to say it, I know a lot of people on the left have good intentions, but a lot of you have lost your fucking minds these last 10 years. You have lost your minds trying to push these agendas that really are... I think the minority voices, like, I mean, one out of a hundred people, really. And I'm not Republican or Democrat. I believe in God. I believe in country. I believe in people. If you live in America, you have the right to do whatever you want, you know, as long as you don't infringe on other people's rights and especially their religious freedom, trying to force things into their bodies that maybe they don't want to take, especially if they haven't had enough time to test it and make sure it's safe to take, like, like, it's just, they become a joke. The left has become a complete and utter joke in so many ways. But because of the echo chambers of so many platforms, they actually think that they're the majority in their minds or that they're smart or like, they're really not. Kamala is a fucking joke, bro, in so many ways. Like, a joke. You can clearly see... She's not thinking on her own. She's being fed what to say. And really, it doesn't even matter who sits in office because we saw Joe Biden, really a guy that should have been retired years ago, who probably can't even walk or anything. And I mean, he made a mockery of the office, in my opinion. But I find it funny. <clears throat> and in some ways, there's always some truth behind every joke. Yeah, they're laughing about it. But I promise you, if these people win. They're coming after him. <clears throat> they're going after Tucker. They're going after me. They're going after anybody that wants to have a different opinion, that wants to debate these serious issues, like our children. Our children are a serious topic. And what I find the most ironic is 
people want to push these life-altering decisions and take the authority away from parents, for example, like in California, like hide from their parents if they're going to do something while they're minors that can significantly impact their lives, maybe even destroy their lives. And most of these people can't even have kids themselves. They don't want to participate in the biological order of actually having children, yet they want to push their agenda on you and your children. I mean, that's just one ideological problem I have with people on the left. Period. Like, no. Okay? Um, <clears throat> but this, the, you know, one an hour and 48 minute sit down between the two i think you really should watch it and i think it's very important so make sure you check it out pd chimed in patrick bet david who's being called a cuck for not being as tough on certain guests about certain topics and tiptoe tiptoeing around what's going on in the middle east these are not my words these are the words of many people on x what do you think do you think patrick bet david's like especially with his Dan Blazarian uh, sit-down, seems to be labeling him as a lay-down, you know, for the people that are fighting overseas. Pull up uh, <clears throat> any one of them. Pull up any one of them. Go ahead. Play this one here. By the way, this reminds me of the old Apple commercial. I don't uh, know yeah, if you guys remember yeah, yeah. that. Go ahead. He loses, man. What? <laughs> so, you know, everyone was commenting. List. And let's not forget what Melinda Gates, because he mentioned Gates at the end, Pat. Melinda Gates said one of the main reasons she left her husband, uh, Bill Gates, is because his relationship with Epstein after he was a convicted pedophile. She said he was abhorrent. She said she felt he was evil personified. And she met him one time, and she felt evil from him and these guys mm -hmm. are best friends and I, I i think it's one of the main reasons that they're fearing this guy and he's absolutely right and he said it it's because of that and god knows what he knows with all the all the twitter files that he has all the direct messages from all these people well you know it's interesting and it's gonna it's gonna seem like uh, so obvious at this point but about i don't know six to nine months ago pbd made a prediction and it's becoming abundantly clear pat said and this was th from now you're gonna be like of, of course i see it now but he said, watch Trump, Tucker, and Elon I remember come that. together I remember that. and sort of form sort of some of this uniformity Alliance. transformers. But the I reason said this he a year and a half ago. Okay, so was it that long ago? Yeah. But the reason you made that prediction at that time is because it was almost a I little said it far a fetched. Month after he got fired from Fox, which would have been what, May of twenty twenty three. Okay, year, gotcha. Over a year. So I like remember him saying that also. But at the time, Good call. It was like, whoa, why would this happen? What's going on here? But the, the, the reality is this. Because of this administration, because of the DEI, ESG, woke mind virus, LGBTQIA, he, him, they, them, they, all that, you have people like Elon Musk, Joe Rogan, just going with common sense, being like, yeah, I was not a Trump guy, clearly. But at this point, I am, what do you call himself, dark MAGA? Like, he's dark. all in on MAGA. He was at the Butler... Um, That's the rally. The, at the rally, on stage, jumping, jumping. around. And <clears throat> That's what they've done, you know? That's what they've done. They forced people that really weren't into politics to have no choice but to get into it. Because you put the American people with their backs against their wall with this fucking nonsense. Up is down, down is up. And I'm going to prove the up is down and down is up. Like this fucking asshole. Like Gavin Newsom who bans California from requiring ID to vote. California Governor Gavin Newsom has signed legislation that prevents local governments from requiring voters to present identification at the polls, a law aimed at curbing conservative efforts in cities like Huntington Beach. The new law is a response to Huntington Beach's controversial voter ID requirement, which was passed by the city's residents in March. In April, California Attorney General Rob Bonta and Secretary of State Shirley Weber sued Huntington Beach to invalidate the law, arguing the local measure violated state voting protections. The right to freely cast your vote is the foundation of our democracy, and Huntington Beach's voter ID policy falls in the face of his principle. No, what it sounds like is you're creating a back door for all these illegal migrants that you're allowing into your states while you punish your law-abiding citizens like that 7-Eleven clerk that I, car that I showed you last week. Lawlessness, chaos, anarchy, so you can create a new order. These people are sick. 
Why shouldn't we have IDs to vote? Americans are the only people that should be voting this election. Why would you be so adamant about passing a law to prevent people from presenting ID? Or state institutions or municipalities from double-checking and making sure that people that are actually alive and citizens are the only ones that are voting. This shouldn't be a state law. This is where the federal government needs to step in and pass that law once and for all. After all, the DMV wants us to get real IDs. Well, maybe it's time to use those real IDs to really know who's voting in the election. Like, how about all these real IDs that we're going to need to travel? How about they should be used so we can verify who's really voting in this election and all future elections? Clowns, bro. Fucking clowns. Crazy. What else is crazy is a police camera catches Cookie Monster speeding in an Audi RS2 Avant. The Muppet mask may have hidden driver's identity, but German police still sent the car's owner a ticket in the mail. I mean, here's a shot of this. I mean, it's just great. It just looks like Cookie Monster's driving an Audi. This year has certainly been full of twists and turns, but here's something we doubt anybody had on their 2024 bingo card, Cookie Monster. The beloved Muppet was photographed on September 20th going 11, kilometer, 11 kilometers over the limit in an Audi on a drive between Dortmund, been there, and Hagen, I've been there also, in Germany. According to the local police, the cookie monster in question is not just driving any Audi, though. The car appears to be an Audi RS2 Avant, the first performance wagon and first RS-badged performance car ever made by the brand. <clears throat> While the driver was almost certainly not the original Cookie Monster, the driver wearing the costume was still rendered unidentifiable due to the disguise. Dortmund police say that the car is registered to a 57-year-old man from Hagen and that the registered owner will be receiving a fine in the mail. If the Muppet Mass driver is the owner of the car, that person may consider a fine for driving over a speed limit to be a reasonable price for the official police photo of a Jim Henson creation driving a rare Audi. After the storms of Helene, and by the way, just a quick update from the last episode I did live. We had someone in North Carolina, Mighty Young. He just got back to New York. He took all the supplies that we were able to raise and from New York and sent it down. And he says it's so bad that he's filling up a second truck as we speak. He's about to drive back down another 10 hours with his son. You could check out that was my last episode before this one. And... Um, on Mighty Young's words, he said that he's seen literally rivers full of rooftops of homes that slide down these mountains, and they don't even know if the people ever made it out or not. Like, it's literally that bad. And the efforts are going pretty well right now, and a lot of volunteers from all over have gone to the aid of their fellow Americans, and we're waiting to get more feedback of just how bad this storm was in Tampa. During the last couple of days, though, there's been a lot of chatter, especially on X, about whether the government is really controlling the weather. I happen to be one of them that thinks there is definitely a way to manipulate the weather. I do believe in uh, HARP and other technologies, and you could do your research on this, but I guess it's getting so out of hand on the internet that Biden, who I'm surprised is still even talking publicly at this point, decided to make a statement about it. Biden tells Trump, get a life over hurricane misinformation. We are going to take you now to the White House where President Biden is making yeah, remarks yeah, on Milton. Let's, Let's see what he has to say. Ready for any calls for help this morning. There's still very dangerous conditions in the state, and people should wait to be given the all clear by their leaders before they go out. We know from previous hurricanes that it's often the case. That more I mean, it's, it's alive, honest to God, is like sad to even listen to this guy talk. Like, it, it truly is sad for him to even be talking at this age on behalf of the whole country. Joe Biden on Thursday delivered a sharp rebuke of Donald Trump while speaking on Hurricane Milton. Are you kidding me? Biden responded, Mr. President Trump, former President Trump, get a life, man. Help these people. The president was then asked by a reporter if he would do anything to try to hold Trump accountable after Biden pledged to go after those who seek to take advantage of victims through price gouging or scamming. The public will hold him accountable, Biden said. You better. The press hold him accountable because you know the truth. 
The White House and other administration officials are forcefully pushing back on false claims about FEMA aid for storm victims. Among the rampant rumors are that people can only receive $750, that FEMA funding is going towards migrants instead of victims, and that people's property will be seized. As a result of the misinformation, Biden said responders on the ground aiding and recovery efforts are facing threats. We are seeing horrific hate speech of all types propagated on online platforms. That deplorable speech has an impact on people's lives, and it is also a motivating force for people to do harm, and it has got to stop. Mayorkas said to ABC News Chief White House Correspondent Mary Bruce, The death toll from Helene has surpassed 230, with hundreds more displaced. In Florida, there have been at least 10 confirmed fatalities as a result of Milton. Milton, by the numbers, at least five dead, at least 12 tornadoes, 3.4 million without power. And if we go to my friend and fellow podcaster, Danny Jones, who lived right in the eye of the storm. We actually have some live shots here that you won't see on TV like this one. You can see the gap. So that's my friend Danny right there. And it was bad out there. It was bad. So it could have been worse. <clears throat> the most interesting story of the entire hurricane was a man that the internet is calling Lieutenant Dan in reference to the character from the movie Forrest Gump that had one, you know, had his legs amputated and manned the boat during a hurricane. So this guy, I saw his videos right before the storm came in. He's like, I'm not leaving. And he's on this tiny ass boat. Well, he weathered the storm in that boat. And he's become a legend of the internet. I've got you on News Nation. We just wanted to. Know, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm just getting wet. The one legged sailboat dwelling Florida man, affectionately nicknamed Lieutenant Dan, is okay after riding out Hurricane Milton's wrath in Tampa Bay. So, this went viral, this story. For those of you that caught on to it, if not, it's a pretty funny and scary. I was actually scared for him, but thank God he's all right. Swing state polling pushes Trump over 280 electoral votes into presidency. New surveys from seven states likely to be closed contested in November hold good news for those who want a second Donald Trump presidency. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin polls present a path for Trump to eclipse the 270 electoral votes needed to win, giving him multiple paths to the White House if these numbers hold up in the ballot box. I mean, I just don't see how the left has any chance. I don't even see Kamala signs anywhere, and their policy in the Middle East definitely hurt them. They lost a lot of the left because of that. Sean Diddy Combs to push for spring trial as he appears in New York City trafficking case today. Sean Diddy Combs is set to appear in a Manhattan courtroom Thursday. Um, as the jail hip hop moguls lawyers push for a trial as soon as April. Combs, 54, is due in front of Mahan federal judge Arun Sabramanian at 2 p.m. to discuss a potential trial date and set a timeline for when the feds will turn over voluminous realms of evidence to the embattled entrepreneur's attorneys. Israeli forces fire on UN peacekeepers in Lebanon, wounding two. The Israeli military repeatedly fired at a UNIFIL headquarters and position in South Lebanon, injuring two members of the peacekeeping force, the United Nations says. Two of its peacekeepers were injured after an Israeli tank fired its weapon at a guard tower at the group's headquarters. The attack on the tower had to cause had caused two peacekeepers to fall. <clears throat> Israeli air strikes killed 28 people sheltering in a Gaza school. An Israeli airstrike on school sheltering displaced people in central Gaza killed at least 28 people, including women and children. Women and children. Women and children. Many are women and children. Women and children. Inside of schools, inside of hospitals. Women and children. Women and children. UN accuses Israel of war crimes over attacks on Gaza hospital. You know, where there's a lot of people seeking shelter. Women and children. Women and children. Women and children. Desperate population. Women and children. More than 42,000 people have been killed in Gaza since then, according to the territory's Hamas-run uh, health ministry. 
earthquakes in Iran and Israel fuel theories of covert nuclear testing? Do you think they're testing nukes? Maybe. That's some news. 400 Shahed attack drones explode at the same time in southern Russia. A Ukrainian raid struck, reportedly struck, uh, struck a drone warehouse near Obatat Britsky. Here's some footage of that on X. They blew it sky high, showing that drones are very effective in war and guerrilla warfare. There's like no way to really protect against them. Crazy. Haiti, my heart goes out to you, Haiti. All people of Haiti. What a tragic, tragic, tragic country. One of the most tragic in the world, in my opinion. It's so sad what they have to go through. The death toll in a gang attack on Haitian town rises to at least 115. The death toll in a brutal gang attack last week on a small town in central Haiti has risen to 115, local officials told the Associated Press. The attack on residents of Pont Sonde on October 3rd was one of the biggest massacres that Haiti has ever seen in recent history. The UN previously said that at least 70 people were killed last week. The victims included babies, young mothers, and elderly. Women and children. Women and children around the world. Sometimes I just want God to hit us with a meteorite. I swear to God. Just hit us with a meteorite. Just end it, God. Because we've clearly failed as a species. You gave us this beautiful gift where we could do anything we want. We could use our imagination. We can use our heart. We can help people. We can create. And instead, we allow corrupt human beings to run the world. The good don't stand up for the weak. And evil has filled this planet to the point where I swear to God, I, I just, just, I hope a, a meteorite smashes into us. Seriously. Marburg's global risk almost eliminated by Rwanda's quick response. I was covering that story the last couple of weeks that we had to be careful. Seems like they have it contained and we will be okay. This was a quick episode of the Interesting Times podcast with your boy Beck Lover. Make sure you hit the sub button, check out all the news, check out all the interviews I've done, and I have a ton more coming. Check me out on X, Instagram. I'd love to see you on there. And just know we live in interesting times. Indeed, my friends. Next lover. Next lover.